welcome back to another video on the channel today. Today we are back with quite an interesting video today because as you can tell by the title we now know the other clubs that Rob and Ryan were thinking of buying before they obviously chose Wrexham FC so we're going to be discussing that in today's video and we're back with another video of the Wrexham Roundup. Everything that's happened I've got a list in front of me of all the topics I want to talk about. Before we get into it make sure to get down there and click the red subscribe button. We're on the road to 20,000 subscribers so if you could get down there and click the red subscribe button because this is the place to be. For all the best Wrexham AFC content here on YouTube we are the leading number one channel for Wrexham content so get down there subscribe because there's more brilliant videos coming your way. Also as well thank you to everyone for the happy birthday messages on the weekend. The, my best present of all was of course the win and we are through into the next round of the FA Cup which we're going to be discussing in today's video so that was the best present of the lot and of course I just want to give a huge shout out to Sam Dolby. Took his goal really really well. I think he could have had a first half hat trick. I think he played really well up front and of course he did get the assist for Paul Mullins second half goal and overall I didn't watch the full game back. I could only see the highlights but people seemed pleased with the win. So there yeah, it's always a positive when you see that we have had a good result away from home especially in the FA Cup we're through into the second round if we win our second round game we're into the third round now if you don't know well you should know after last year the third round is where championship and Premier League teams come in so if we win our next game in the FA Cup second round we can actually draw a Premier League team we could draw Manchester City so yeah that's an exciting time because obviously we know our second round draw which again I'll be talking on in today's video but yeah it seemed like a good performance in the team and yeah I'm majorly happy that we're through into the next round I thought this was going to be a very tricky game and of course Mansfield hit back immediately when we did score our second goal but yeah we held on we had a good solid performance and we are through to the second round of the Emirates FA Cup and we do know our second round opponents now touch wood I don't want to tempt anything yet but I think on paper this is one of the better draws we could have got we've drawn a team in the National League South you'll be familiar of them Yeovil Town we have drawn National League South side Yeovil Town most importantly at home now if it had been away on the 2nd or 3rd of December then that would have been a really big trek to have made down to Somerset but yeah we've drawn them at home now Yeovil are coming off that 3-2 win at home to Gateshead I know if you don't know already our former striker Jake Hyde does actually play for Yeovil Town so he'll be making a return to the race course ground now I don't think this will obviously be a walk in the park some people might think it because obviously they've dropped down to regional football but looking at the table now they've had an astonishing start to the season played 14 won 10 drawn to and lost to they currently sit on 32 points top of the league and three clear of Avely in second so they're going to bring their a game they're going to be up for it they know what's at stake a big third round tie could possibly happen if they do come to the race course ground and beat us and if i'm being honest we've seen it against farnborough last year we've seen it against Blythe spartans i don't think this is sort of a game where we're going to play our rotational players i think parky will obviously want to go out put a strong team out because you know that third round draw could be big for us we could draw a big team we could have a good fa cup fixture so who doesn't want to win in the FA Cup second round to progress to the third round? So, although it'll be a tough game, I'm confidently back us. I do think we can win this comfortably, but Yeovil Town are the only team to beat us at home under the takeover. So, is that a sign of what's to come? Let's hope not, because... I mean, if we got beaten by a National League style team, it'd be a bit embarrassing. But yeah, we have drawn Yeovil Town at home in the FA Cup second round. And Wrexham have yet again secured another big sponsorship. This time, it is M&S Food. They are the latest company to be on board and sponsoring Wrexham AFC. Now, Wrexham have announced a three-year partnership with M&S Food, which will see its support community initiatives. So... Yeah, it's yet another sponsor to come on board this season and had quite a big feature in the M&S Christmas advert. Robin Ryan with his gloves, which I found quite hysterical. And then obviously there were those Easter eggs in the background that had the Wrexham baubles on them. So it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Four Christmases ago, if you just said Wrexham would have been in a Christmas M&S advert, I mean, I don't think about that on a regular basis, but just like these small things that you'd never have thought would have happened three or four years ago but yeah Wrexham have landed a big sponsor M&S Food obviously they'll be supplying the club financially which would be good and of course helping the community out which I think again is a really good touch Ryan said our partnership with M&S Food is important to Rob and I due to its established history of Wrexham and its commitment to supporting the local community so it seems more community based than maybe financial wise or to do with the club so 
I mean, Rob and Ryan are just incredible people. They're giving back to the community. They're helping the community of Wrexham, which obviously has supported this football club and has supported the town for so many years. I think the sleeping giant is the correct term for Wrexham. It's obviously, the community of Wrexham helped us stay afloat two times in the past 20 years so it's good that they're able to give back to those hard-working people who have saved the club and who've done hard work within the community. He also said it's essential we partner with a brand who understands the broader goals for the community as a whole and is committed to making positive changes so you can't fault it, you cannot fault what these two are doing for this football club, it's absolutely incredible. So yeah, m and Food are the latest sponsorship partners of Wrexham AFC and I do believe there might be more Christmassy themed videos of Wrexham players in it or to do with Wrexham AFC, I think. I'm not entirely sure on that, but I do believe there are a couple of videos that are going to come. So keep an eye out for those. And if you haven't already, watch their Christmas advert that has Rob and Ryan in it. Now looking ahead to tomorrow for our EFL trophy game at home to Port Vale. Wrexham announced they've sold over 6,000 tickets for this game. Now obviously Wrexham are through to the next round after wins away at Crewe, Alexander and Newcastle under 21 at home. So we're already through. I think this is a good chance to play some rotational players tomorrow, get some of the players who aren't in the main squad, Hassan and Billy Waters, I think it's a chance for them to obviously regain match fitness, regain that feel of playing in a first team game of football. Let's be honest, there's no pressure on this game, there is no pressure for Wrexham to go out and win. We're through to the next northern round of the draw, so yeah, we can sort of sit back and relax and it'll be a good chance to see some of the squad rotational sporadic players get a chance in that first team. and. You know, a win against a League One team, I know they'll probably go into this playing maybe a weaker team. I believe they're already through to the next round. Now, for the reason why you probably clicked on this video, you all want to know the clubs that were on the shortlist for Rob and Ryan to potentially purchase. Of course, this doesn't mean anything now, but when the list did come out last night, I was quite shocked at some of the teams that were on this list. A wide variety of teams all over the country. It was Humphrey Kerr that did say this at yesterday's socially distanced sports bar. Now, Humphrey did say the clubs that Rob and Ryan were looking at purchasing were Aldershot Town, Carlisle United, Macclesfield FC, Hartlepool United and he didn't say this on the night but one of Rob's friends actually said to him that he would like them to buy Falkirk up in Scotland. Now we're going to be focusing on the first four that they obviously had shortlist all together. Aldershot Town who currently sits 7th in the Vanarama National League. Carlisle United sit 21st in League 1. Macclesfield sits 6th in the Northern Non-League Premier. Hartlepool United sit 14th in the Vanarama National League. So yeah, like I said, a wide variety of teams all over the country from Aldershot up to Carlisle. Aldershot is definitely a no, I think, when we went there. The stadium didn't look in the best of qualities. They're obviously competing with all the other London clubs around them. Don't get me wrong, they've got a good fan base, but I don't think it would have had the pull power as maybe a Wrexham or a Hartlepool United, for example. I think it would have been hard to attract a lot of eyes onto the football club. But yeah, Aldershot, I mean, it wouldn't have been the greatest of football clubs to purchase. And that's no offence to Aldershot. I think they've got good fans and I think obviously they're doing well in the National League. But yeah, I think it would have been a bit disappointing if you'd have chosen Aldershot Town over Wrexham. Carlisle United good fan base like I said good history good ground Carlisle are a well supported club and I definitely do think there's the potential for them obviously to go up the leagues like they've shown they got promoted last year from League 2 into League 1 Carlisle might have been the better option on this list Macclesfield now this would have been an interesting one because obviously we do know that they've had that recent surge in promotions the club obviously went out of existence in 2020 Robbie Savage came in has took the club up a couple of leagues and I think this would have been a great story of course they've been in National League all the way down i think they went down five six steps so it'd have been good to have rebuilt macclesfield fc but obviously that's a job for robbie savage and his team to do and i'm glad rob and ryan didn't go there but i think what's going on at macclesfield at the minute is very good they've obviously got good ownership they're in a stable place finally obviously they went through many years of not being in a good place financially and ownership wise and it's good to see that they have had a steady ship under robbie savage they've got some good players in that team danny rowe james hardy so yeah macclesfield are a team on the up they currently sit sixth in their league so so yeah, best of luck to them. And of course, the one we all knew about was Hartlepool United, who I don't think they'd have had the pull power like Carlisle United did. But yeah, Hartlepool, ugh, it's a bit 50-50. I don't think Hartlepool would have been a good, sensible choice for Rob and Ryan. I think they're definitely limited to what they can do with competing with Newcastle, Sunderland. Don't get me wrong, all these clubs on this list are good, well-established clubs. But Hartlepool, you know, they get good attendances, but I think there's only a certain amount of 
eyeballs you can get on a club like Hartlepool when they're competing with the likes of Newcastle, Sunderland, all those teams up north. But with Wrexham, we're the only big team in North Wales. You are going to get a lot of people coming to watch Wrexham in the area of North Wales because we are the only club there. We are the only big club in North Wales that are going to obviously go up the English pyramid. So Wrexham out of all these options, definitely the best one. Definitely the best one. I'd have been disappointed if they'd have gone to Aldershot Town, for example, over Wrexham FC. And obviously Rob's friend recommended him to buy Full Kirk. And, you know, I think Full Kirk are in the Scottish Championship. So once you get into the Scottish Premiership, you'll then find it very hard to compete with the likes of Rangers and Celtic. I mean... The best they could have probably done is qualified for Europe every year and then see what they do in Europe. But yeah, I think they'd have been limited to what they could have done at Falkirk. And I think it was a sensible option to stay away from a Scottish team. But yeah, very interesting. Very, very interesting to see the clubs that they could have bought. And I think Wrexham obviously was the best choice out of this list. And if I'm right in saying I saw this on Twitter, they did it on like a score ranking. So they added everything up in the football clubs. I can't remember what categories they were, but I do actually think... Hartlepool beat Wrexham in the score rankings but they did actually choose Wrexham over Hartlepool United so it could have been a completely different story at Hartlepool United they could have been the ones that were competing for promotion to League One but they are our owners they're invested heavily into this club they love the club with all their hearts and they've done so much for the club in this short amount of time they've been there there's many good years ahead for Wrexham AFC and for Robin Ryan as Wrexham owners. Must say as well, we're coming to the end of Welcome to Wrexham, but wow, what an episode. What an episode. The hand of Foz. What an episode that was. It showed the lows of losing away at Halifax Town to the highs of beating Notts County. I think this is one of my favourite episodes because they just showed football. They just showed in the dressing room. They Everything to do with football. They focused heavily on what's going on on the pitch, what's going on after the game, before the game. You know, and they showed that for the Notts County game, Halifax game in the change rooms after. This is more of the content we need on the documentary. It's like Sun Until I Die. That was a lot to do with what's happening in the football club. They stayed and focused on what's happening inside the football club on a match day, what's happening signing-wise. Obviously, they showed that with Ben Foster. I think for season three, that's my only recommendation. Show a lot more of game footage. People would enjoy it a bit more if you could see everything that goes on after the game in the changing room. And yeah, we saw that with the Hand of Foz episode and I cannot wait for the finale to see our promotion back up to the Football League. So yeah, it's been a good week for Wrexham AFC. We've had some really good moments so far in League 2 this season and it's really heating up at the top of the table. Stockport County, Notts County, Wrexham. We're all competing for the same goal at the end of the day and that is promotion to League 1. If you enjoyed this video of the Wrexham Roundup, make sure to get down there, click the red subscribe button, make sure to tap that notification bell for all the best Wrexham AFC content and of course you'll be updated when these videos do come out. Drop a like, do all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next video up the town.